Chapter 4, Lesson 4, Solving Two-Step Inequalities. Again, two-step goes right along with this multi-step real-world problems and mathematical problems, which we're looking at. And as you scroll down here on the screen, we can see that, again, we're just going to be using variables for unknown values in these problems, whether we write them out in word problems or uh, they're just given to us, like here. When we talk about it, we've got two steps. We talked about these in the previous lessons. One lesson we just added. And then in the previous lesson, lesson three, we did multiply or divide. Now, when we get, get, a right, get rid of this screen, you can see the big, long thing down here that we needed to remember, all of this stuff. But we abbreviated that quick on step two. Today's part number is brought to you in part by the number two. Everybody say two. Did you say two? Say two. On step two, we ask ourselves, did we divide by a negative? And if we say yes, and we flip the inequality sign. We twist it. We reverse it. We switch which way the sign is facing. There are two steps. Almost all of them will follow this order, one, two. We'll see some multi-step ones in our notes, one example, and then also on your assignment. But for the most part, step one, all the time, going to be add something. And then we're going to multiply or divide depending on that variable. Anytime it says solve, remember, we're going to follow the same steps we've always been doing. So if there's any subtraction, switch it to adding the opposite. Now, find the variable. Doesn't matter whether you're solving equations or like today we're solving inequalities. Find where that letter is. If it's not on our beloved left side, don't panic. Come here. And now again, we're trying to get this 3y all by itself. So cover it up with your finger, with your pencil, or just ignore it. Like mine, I'm drawing our focus here to the other thing besides the 3y. We need to get rid of adding a negative 4. That is our first step on this. Just like we talked about on this previous slide. Step 1 was to add. Step 2, we multiply or divide. So right now on this one, go ahead and on the upper part up here, just write down that step 1 is to add. We're going to add a plus 4. Because then these guys cancel. That's what we want. But then don't forget to journey all the way to the left side. Add 4 there. So that way we've got 21 less than or equal to 3y. The only thing that still remains up here is the 3y. So make sure you bring the 3y down here. Don't forget the 3 with it. Now we're going to take our focus right here on the 3y. What's happening between the 3 and the y since they're touching? We covered that yesterday where they're timesing. Touching is timesing, which means to get rid of this timesing, we are going to divide. So step two up here, put down that you either multiply or you divide. I use the slash for or. You can write out the word or. And I abbreviated it, div. Start here where the variable is. That way your focus is there. And since there is a 3, a positive 3 there, divide by a positive 3. Because when you divide both sides by a positive 3, these 3s become 1. We have isolated that variable. We've made it all by itself, which is what we want. And now over here, 21 divided by 3 gives you 7. And just like yesterday, you're going to leave a gap here. Don't write anything in there because now we're on step 2. Everybody say 2. Say 2. On step 2, we ask the question, did you multiply or divide by a negative? When we say no, you leave the sign the same and you box it up. That's how we solve. Notice there are two steps. So I need to see those two steps, the step here of adding, the step here of dividing. Then you've got the correct number inequality sign in your answer. So this is at least with one point for trying, a five-point problem just for solving on a quiz or test. But it does say to graphs over here, I'm going to put in a number line very quickly. And from there, once you've drawn it on in, again, doesn't matter how what the size is for you but what i do want is put in five one two three four five roughly evenly spaced if you have extra gap in there that's fine remember the number we start with in the middle comes from your answer 
So we're going to take that seven, get warmer to the right, get colder and lower to the left. If it is a closed circle, if there is a line underneath your inequality sign, it's a closed circle. If when you read it, you say or equal to, it's a closed circle. So when we have seven is less than or equal to y, that's why we're going to put a closed circle there. And then which way do you think you shade as before? Take a guess. I think we go to the right. So before I shade, I'm just going to pick one over that way. I'm going to pick this 9. Is 7 less than or equal to 9? Yes, it is. So I picked the right way. I will shade this way. Again, one last reminder, big arrow or big shading so we can tell which way you shaded. Same thing. If it says solve, no matter what you're solving for, don't subtract. Add the opposite. Then find the variable. What side is it on? Hey, if it's on our beloved left side, great. Cover up the variable. Ignore the 3 and the x. Since the 3 is touching the x, ignore it. We're going to work on this first. Get rid of adding a negative 7. To get rid of adding a negative 7, we're going to add a positive 7. Because these guys cancel. You're left with 3x greater than 12. Step one, you add and keep everything the same. Step two, find the side with the variable. Since that's a positive three, again, put a positive three on both sides. Divide by a positive three, because when you've done that, these threes become one. You're left with x, leave a space, and four. And again, now we ask our question, don't just ask it. Like yesterday, I said, write it in every time. Get that muscle memory so it's stuck in your mind. This is so you can be as set up for success as possible. So when we come to the test, you will remember it because you asked it to yourself mentally and you have physically written it down. Because if we forget to ask, we're going to do all this great work and we could get the wrong answer for one thing. Just forgetting to ask if we multiplied by a negative. Since we did not keep it the same x greater than 4. In class, we bypassed graphing, but here in the video notes, I'll graph very quickly again, so that way we can see them, because you can speed the video up if you want to or need to. Again, the number comes from right in our answer, the 4, 5, 6, 3, 2. It is an opened circle, because it's just x is greater than 4. Since it's greater than 4, we shade this way, and you can always check does 6 work? Is 6 greater than 4? It is. So we've shaded the right way. Again, you can see we're using variables for unknown values, but even more so we're solving multi-step, right now two-step, but multi-step problems in any form. So fractions, decimals, whole numbers. This one up here in the yellow, you can see that there are two ways to solve this if you'd like to know the second way i might include it at the end of the video you might just have to come in and ask me about it so you can see that so if you want to know the second way go right ahead otherwise what we've done with this again we switch it to don't subtract add the opposite and then from there we have to do what with that negative two since it's touching the outside of a parenthesis distribute so draw the loop. Yes, draw it. So you remember you have to multiply the y by negative 2 and the negative 3. This is why we switch it to add the opposite, because when we multiply those, we need to have a positive 6. If we don't get that positive 6, we're going to do a bunch of wonderful math and get the wrong answer. So now that we've got that again, here we are. All we do we find what side the variable is on. Mr. Walls, it's not on the left side. I don't like that. That's okay. Don't panic. Find the side with the variable. Found it. Ignore it. Cover up the negative 2 and the y. If there's anything else there, which, spoiler alert, today there will be because we talked about two steps. Everybody say two. Step one is add. So to get rid of adding by a positive 6, you and I will add a negative 6. If you do that to the left side, journey all the way. Excuse me, if you do that to the right side, do it to the left side, journey all the way over there. Watch your signs. That needs to come out to be a positive 6 greater than negative 2y. And then from there, we're going to divide because the negative 2 is touching 
by negative 2. Doing the math, negative 3, leave a space there, and y. And now go ask that question of ours. Negative. Everybody say negative. Say negative. If you multiply by a negative, when you say yes, this is where if you look at the PDF notes, sometimes I get kind of obnoxious, and I write out really big. So we remember, you need to flip the sign. So instead of it being the greater than sign, we don't want that anymore, flip it. So now it's less than. There is our answer. That is our work. Two steps. When it says to graph, make sure you do that as well. Be very careful on this one. Remember, one, two, three, four, five. That negative three goes in the middle or middle-ish, but then we got to get warmer to the right. So negative two, negative one, going to the left. I don't have room for negative four, so I'm going to skip that. Negative five. I'll try to sneak the negative four in there. There you have it. Graph it. It is less than, so then we need to have an open circle. And again, be very careful. Which way do you think we shade? I think left, Mr. Walls. All right, then pick a number to the left. Negative 5. Now, let me ask this question twice. Is negative 3, is negative 3 less than negative 5? Is negative 3 colder than negative 5? No, it is not. So I've picked the wrong side. That is not a problem. Just don't shade that way. In class, I mentioned, and I'll mention it here again, it's the final result that I'm concerned about, that you've shaded the correct direction. If you guess and guess wrong each time, that is okay. One more time. Fractions. No, don't panic. I see subtraction. Just start there. Don't subtract. Add the opposite. Now, remember, we're doing the same thing. Find the variable. I don't like how it looks. Don't panic. Look, it's on our beloved left side. We get the warm, fuzzy feelings. It just seems like most people like it better when the variable's on this left side. If it doesn't matter to you, then it, maybe the word beloved is not the right term, but it's fun to say. Cover up that X and that negative 2. Here I see adding a negative 8. So that's the first thing we need to do. We need to get rid of adding a negative 8. We're going to do that by adding a positive 8 to both sides. Caution, mental math or calculator. This comes out to be a positive 2 on the right side. Notice the 2 stays on the right side. And then my x over negative 2 stays on the left side. Keep this nice and lined up here as we go on our two-step problem. What next, Mr. Walls? Great question. Focus in here. What's happening between the x and this negative 2? They're a fraction, yes, but what does this line mean? Correct, it means division. So when you see this dividing, we need to get rid of dividing. And to do that, we multiply. Since we're dividing by a negative 2, we're going to use this same number. So on both sides, we are going to multiply by a negative 2. Those cancel. If you want to see why and have an explanation, I can show you that. Please ask. We covered that in a previous chapter. We get negative 4 because these do not have the same sign. And now here again, we got to ask our question on step 2. Everybody say 2. We ask our question negative. Say negative. Did you multiply or divide by a negative? And when we say yes, again, don't just say yes. Write it out. Yes now in your notes, but also on your assignment every time. So you remember we flip. We want that muscle memory so you have the best chance at being successful on your test. One last time, a quick graph over here. Straight line-ish. And then one, two, three, four, five. Pretty much all evenly spaced, so that's good enough for me. Because it's less than or equal to, you get that closed dot. But remember, the number line's a point. Start with the negative four in the middle-ish and get warmer to the right and then get colder to the left. You can, as we talked about in a previous lesson, skip count. So you could have just lib labeled them, written out negative two, then negative four, and then negative six, so that way it looks better and has better spacing. Close dot, I think it goes to the left, Mr. Walls. Great, 
So then let's check it quick. You can just check it mentally, but I'm going to do it so you can visually see it. And again, when I ask you this, let me ask it twice because we're dealing with negatives. Is negative 6 less than negative 4? Is negative 6 colder than negative 4? It is. So you and I have picked the correct way. Shade that direction. And away we go. Our standards, that's what we've been looking at. We want to be able to solve multi-step inequalities or equations, whether they have positives or negatives or fractions or decimals or integers. Up here again, when we talk about using variables, our word problems help us write one-step and two-step inequalities or equations, and then we even get to solve those as well. And that's what you're doing today. We're going to solve multi-step. So that means at least two steps, which I need to see each time, where step one, we added something. And step two, you're either going to multiply or you're going to divide. Do not make the answers magically appear. Show the 